I really wish you were here. Last night, I went to this amazing steakhouse, and you would have loved it. Uh-huh. Welcome back to Supernova Travel. If you are new, thank you for joining our Travel Around the World family. Like, comment, and subscribe. And if you are a returning, thank you for support and share my channel and continue your journey. Today, we review 90 Day Fiance Season 8, Episode 8, Unsure and Insecure. And every person in this episode should not be together, except for Joe and Yard. They belong together. Everyone else, no. But let's move on. Let's start with Andrew and Amara. So we meet up with Amara. She makes it back home and meets up with her father and tells him all she went through. How immigration took her passport and then lied on the paperwork that she didn't have a passport and then deported her after holding her for three days. And now she is back in France. I just wanted to show Andrew that I cared about him and that I love him. She also makes us aware that Andrew still has not contacted her since finding out she's alive. In regards to whether she arrived in France safely or how her trip back home went. But here and yet, she is talking about saving her relationship. People, I don't get it. What type of magic does Andrew have? Like those soap opera lines must be on point every time. That vocabulary is, you know, up there, you know, because words have power. After hearing Amira's story, we cut to Andrew and he's sitting on the beach eating ice cream at the resort, watching everyone play. This dude is going for food, going for massages. He's just enjoying his vacation. It never dawned on him to just, you know, take the time, go back home to the U.S., cancel the vacation. Because I could have sworn he came to Mexico to be with Amira, but it looks like you're trying to have fun by yourself. And I'm just trying to figure out, you haven't called her in how many hours or how many days to check in on her because you're just having too much fun yourself? Then they finally have a phone call and he has the nerve to start talking crap. I really wish you were here. Last night I went to this amazing steakhouse and you would have loved it. Uh-huh. Andrew, I don't want to hear about all the crap you've been doing for fun after I was detained for three days like a criminal and you enjoying a whole vacation. That's why you don't come back home. I've been uh, trying to make the most of it, but it feels empty a little bit without you. Look, Andrew, Amira doesn't need your one-liners. I got a walk in tour on Saturday and then uh, I got a boat tour on Tuesday. And go now you're talking about doing it all over again? Look. Andrew is so selfish. He comes off on his TV screen as so selfish. I don't know if they're editing him this way, but he is missing the whole point. He does not know how to be emotionally available to someone else. Everyone has to be available to his emotional needs. I don't see it. Like, Amira needs to get out of this. And this happens to people who are very caring people. You wind up with people who don't care and you just keep on giving, 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 giving. And you're not going to get anything you want ever because that is who they are. Our next couple is Brandon and Julia. So we meet up with Julia and she is up early in the morning and she is attempting to do the farm work. And Julia is fed up with the farm life. Poor girl about to lose her entire mind. And she really hates those chickens. Shut up! Julia looked like she about to have a whole breakdown. She then talks to her father and they discuss that Brandon needs to act more like the head of the house and start taking care of Julia better. This is not the life she signed up for when she came to America. I need go this. I need do this. I won't leave now. Brandon and Julia continue this conversation when Brandon gets off work. And Julia is trying to tell him that this is not what I want to do. She's been telling them that this is what she hasn't wanted to do for like almost two, three weeks now. And Brandon tries to make light of the situation once again, stating, I don't know what's so hard about taking care of cute animals on the farm. Um, this 
this is not easy. What is this, Brandon? A cartoon? And it's just, Julia is not having it. She wants to go. She doesn't want to hear no excuses. She tells him there's an ultimatum. Either they move or she goes back to Russia because this is not the life she wants. Let's move on to our next couple, Mike and Natalie. They wake up with a new lease on life. Natalie has a light bulb moment and thinks that Mike would respond better if she acted more soft like a lady. They apologize to one another and start preparing for the arrival of Mike's mom. Natalie is very nervous about this encounter because Mike has told his mom about his trip to Russia and she feels the mom will be able to fill the atmosphere of the house as they have still not been getting along. Mike's mom takes Mike's side. And my mom takes Mike's side. It's strange. Mike's mom comes to the house finally, all the way from Oklahoma. Okay, people. My first issue is that Natalie did not get up and go outside to say hello or assist the mother. Or Mike. Like... Do we not know how to make a good first impression? If you're having fights in your house, the least you can do is show a united front. They then go in the house, they sit down and talk a bit, and Natalie starts telling Mike's mom some of her worries, and the mom quickly puts Natalie in her place. Well, try to make me behave when, better. You, when you give him back the ring, were you making him guessing? So they all go out to dinner, and they discuss the issues of the relationship and the rain and Natalie finally owns up to the fact that she was wrong this whole time Mike and us the audience just been looking for acknowledgement that she understands that what she did was not appropriate I know that I done wrong with Reem. yes that's the first time I heard Natalie admit to her mistake and to get along with Trish Mike's mom, she finally admits it on camera. Cause you understand, if you do your dirt on national TV, you have to fix it on national TV. I think April 3rd would be a good day. To do a wedding? <laughs> yeah. One of Natalie's major stresses is that she wants her mom to be at her wedding. And for that to happen, they have to set a date to give her family and friends time to apply for visas. With a bit of convincing from Mike's mother, they set a date for April 3rd. So whether or not they get married, at least her mom will have the papers to travel to the US, which seems to calm Natalie's spirits a bit. Although Trish helped in making the compromise, we find out. I personally believe that they have too many differences and that it probably wouldn't work out in the long run. She doesn't even believe this relationship will work in the long run. Okay, our next couple is Jovi and Yara. This is really short, everyone. Yara goes to the pharmacy and buys herself a pregnancy test. And she thinks she's pregnant and she takes it. Now, I don't know about you guys, but she peed on that stick. Then left out the bathroom, you know, tears in her eye, sat down, called her friend, told her friend that she's pregnant. Now... I'm not very familiar with pregnancy tests like that, but I thought that one line meant not pregnant and two lines meant you are pregnant. So I only saw one line. I did not see a second line. So I'm thinking Yara is just not reading this correctly and, throw, and blowing this all out of proportion. But we do know that she did have a baby because people give spoilers, but I don't usually read them, but that one was one. And it's a positive pregnant. And I think she needs to take another one. Personally, I think she needs to take another pregnancy test and see what happens. In this episode, she picks up Jovi from the airport. He has a drink in his hand. She's very upset with him having a drink in his hand at 8.50 a.m. in the morning, which is a little early in the morning. And I think it's also compounded that she is pregnant. So now it's even worse that, you know, you're thinking about your future and what to do. And the father of your child gets off an airplane at 8.50 a.m. in the morning and he has a drink in his hand. But she doesn't tell him this episode. So we have to wait until episode nine. The end. Next couple. Our last couple of the episode, Stephanie and Ryan. Stephanie's insane. She literally thinks that the reason they are arguing is because they are in a long distance relationship. 
finally decided COVID calmed down enough for the borders to open up so I could go to Belize. This man is showing her who he is and she is blatantly ignoring the flashing red signs. She is literally filling a whole suitcase with clothes, watches, and jewelry for this man who just told her a day ago that he is just fine without her and don't need her gifts. I'm not understanding. I tell you, money does not buy self-esteem. She gets to Belize and Ryan must have really wanted to get his act together so he can get over to the United States because he came to the airport with flowers and a balloon so he has some type of etiquette. They get to the hotel and I swear the hug Ryan gives Stephanie gives me how long I have to keep up this charade type vibes. So glad you made it go. <laughs> I'm glad I'm finally here. Yeah. Stephanie starts to unpack all Ryan gifts, the clothes, the shoes, the watches. And Ryan says he'd rather have the money. In the confessional, they talk about the glow-in-the-dark condoms and quickly move on to search Ryan's phone. This woman has a nerve to want to search this man's phone. And she still has not been honest about having coitus with his cousin. Like, how jealous people be, go be doing the most messed up stuff. It was Kayla SC. Stephanie finds out the few girls that Ryan has on his phone are his family members, a cousin and a sister. And Ryan trying to get over to the United States is like, babe, I'll take the password off so you can look through the phone anytime you want. Some days, Stephanie, she drives me really crazy, you know, like, I would probably just want to give up on all this, you know, but. Then at dinner, Stephanie, trying to make a recovery from looking crazy on camera, asked Ryan, when I got here, did you know I was going to ask to look through your phone? And Ryan's like, no. Because I'm actually way too deep in it already, and I actually really want to get to America, and I want to see what America looks like, you know? Then Stephanie like, every time I come back here, I look through your phone. So why would this time be any different? Well, her recovery from looking crazy just failed. We start to see an argument about to ensue, but cooler heads prevail and they decide to start just eat their f dinner as Ryan sorts out all the right things to say to keep himself on track to the United States. Ryan said last episode he has a sweet, sweet plan and it's oh so sweet. As soon as he gets to the U.S., he is dropping this woman. Did you figure I'd ask to see it when I got here? No. Now that we have watched Ryan try to make himself look like a good man on TV and Stephanie trying to recover from looking more stupid, take a moment to subscribe, like, and comment on my channel about 90 Day Fiance Season 8, Episode 8. Have a great day!